By the time you hear this, I will likely either be dead, or undead, or insane, or caught in an alternate dimension or something. Just recently I played a bit of Dead Island 2 in the booth next to this, but now I've played Escape Dead Island, which is something completely different. Yeah. Still Dead Island, but very, very different. Uh, can you first tell us a little bit about what went going into this project? How did it come about and sort of what was the motivation behind it? So the way we approached it was that um, we knew that uh, we wanted to thicken up a bit the background uh, universe of what Dead Island is. And um, we know some people did latch on to some of the elements that were present in Dead Island and Riptide, but uh, those games weren't really you know, tailored for a strong uh, narrative story. And we thought the best way to convey this is probably to do like a spin-off where we're going to tailor the whole experience around trying to have this uh, narrative element and also we wanted to approach um, to have a more atmospheric approach to um, you know how uh, things go for a regular uh, human uh, within the, the the situation of the Dead Island outbreak as opposed to you know the immune superhero like characters from the main Dead Island series so I, I guess sort of the lazy way to, to, to describe it is like it's almost like a telltale take on Dead Island, but um, it's, not, it's not quite like a telltale game, but is that sort of part of what you looked at doing? Um, so I guess some, the, the point that creates the biggest similarity is uh, the fact that we went for that comic art style, um, but we're, we're really far from the more pointed click adventure approach that Telltale has, I think. Um, what, what we went for was trying to uh, keep some of the key elements of what Dead Island is about, you know, the action, um, and then mix it in with um, some stealth element that, you know, cr are useful for someone who's weaker than the people you're used to. And uh, the way we tell our story is kind of going into experimental directions like the, the the character and through him the player will be going through some really weird events uh, will constantly be questioning what he's seeing is it real is it not and um, relying less on maybe you know human interactions and more on like sensations and things that you go through because I, I guess that's one of the feelings that I had after playing it I was a little bit confused at what I just played because because it seems like you're sort of, you're sort of, you're, you're sort of playing around with what's real and what's not, and, and the player isn't really let in on what to think quite. Perhaps, perhaps you'll learn later, but not in the beginning. So we, um, what, what, you, what you played was uh, early part of the game, and it's kind of like when things start going awry, you know, for, for our uh, main character, Cliff. But uh, as, as the game progresses and as the story progresses, there's a sense of crescendo that, that you know, takes place. And through it all and through all the little events that happen and all the details that you know, some players will pick up here and others will pick up there, um, what we're trying to go for as a player experience is to have each one end up with you know, trying to have his own uh, interpretation and actually getting people to talk about it and being like, you know, I think this is what happened. And like, oh, really? Because I saw that and, you know, this is what I, uh, the conclusion I came to. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of like a, a, a target, an objective for us. And if we can get people to, like, be intrigued and be just like, you know, oh, what the hell is going on? And all of a sudden surprised, then, you know, I think we, we've been going in the right direction then. Yeah, so, so what's, the, what's the idea with that? Is is there a truth then, or are you designing it in some way that there can be several truths, or how do you sort of, because th that must be very different f from your approach to making the game. So, uh, in that regard, um, like one of the, when we, when we approached it and started going with the whole um, insanity idea, um, we, we, we started gathering lots of references, and one, one key one that, you know, um, was part of this whole mix uh, was, was Lost. But one thing we didn't want to take from Lost was this um, idea that in the end we throw so many threads around that you know they're all spread all over the place and none of them connect back to, to something meaningful. So we don't, we don't end up 
but we didn't want to end up either by having like this text wall where it's like, oh, and this is actually the explanation of what was ha happening. We tried to keep it within, you know, a certain uh, range so that a lot of players, you know, might get to uh, their conclusion differently. But ultimately, from from what we saw, you know, when people try the game and, and, and tell us what they think was going on, what we notice is that a lot of the time they're not far off from, you know, the idea that we have in the back. So we do have a plan. We don't want to, you know, spoil it to the player and stuff. But it's nice to see that, uh, you know, by combining what you see and, you know, trying to create links between all these uh, events and elements, a lot of people seem to be getting in the right direction. So how did the relationship with Fat Shark come to be? Because I don't really think of them as, as this sort of narrative-driven third-person studio. They've, they've done a lot of different things, but this is perhaps something a little bit new to them. Um, I believe uh, the way it started was that they had uh, the technology and they had the art style mm. that we were looking for. Um, and so once we started, uh, you know, contacting them and, and, and talking with them about the project, um, there seemed to be a fit between like what they were into and it, I think it piqued their interest. And then they um, were coming back with like how they would approach it and we felt like we were, you know, finding the same um, level of understanding. And yeah, since then we've, uh, once, once we were like, all right, this is how we're going to do it, you know, we just ran with it. And we've been having a great uh, relationship and uh, partnership on that title since then. So, uh, speaking of, of like the franchise as a whole, uh, obviously they, they sort of fit together in some ways. They have very different tones, very different things. Is there sort of is there something that you can take away from from Escape Dead Island to Dead Island Two, or or that players who played the, the first two games will sort of get as a if there is there any added bonus to playing this? So. Um, Escape Dead Island takes place uh, between Dead Island 1 and Riptide and Dead Island 2. And the narrative uh, of it goes through what was at the root of the whole uh, out outbreak from the start. And as you're discovering, you know, um, going through the story moments or uh, discovering the collectibles, which then uh, you can check out in a gallery that has like voiceover text that can range from um, Cliff taking a picture of a zombie and making some smart ass line to some like document revealing uh, um, some key element. Uh, there's going to be things that are going to explain, um, well, you know, some of the elements of what Dead Island 1 and Riptide were about. And then there's going to be some things that might not necessarily make too much sense yet for players the first time they encounter it. But if they get to go through uh, Dead Island 2, then it's going to click. It's going to be like, hey, I remember seeing that. You know, so it, it plays this kind of in-between puzzle piece uh, on the narrative point of view. And um, like I said, we wanted to, you know, thicken the whole Dead Island background and, you know, show that it is um, a, a consistent world and universe where, you know, there are things happening, there are rules, there are narrative threads, and we, we are, uh, you know, <laughs> on top of it, you know, not just throwing zombies around. And there's no firm release date yet, it's uh, quarter four? Yeah, so far it's um, quarter four, so um, I guess it's going to be in the coming months. Um, but no, no specific date yet. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My name is Cliff Kahlo, and this is my story.